welcome back to the channel guys so i got some uh bad news um last weekend uh we got the new transfer case gears in uh from magnus motorsports the transfer case held everything i threw at it but unfortunately the evil eagle is down for the count again as my luck has it i fix one thing and something completely unrelated brakes on the car i don't know what it is with my luck this year but it has absolutely been terrible and it is very exhausting i don't even know what to say at this point uh other than take a step back and take a breather from the car for a little bit or dig in and pull it apart and fix it as most of you know i had an event this past weekend uh like i said last video uh, street machine shootout we went out to firebird raceway and ran the car first pass off the trailer i went ahead and put the, uh, the spicy tune up in the car put it on kill uh the car left really well at 330 foot really well and on a 2-3 shift something let loose in the transmission either it broke the input shaft or broke the converter I've broken this converter in the same exact fashion, same exact scenario in Seattle uh, last year. And what ended up happening in Seattle is the hub inside the converter, the hub in the uh, turbine, it actually, it started to spin inside the hub, or the hub started to spin inside the turbine. So the turb, it would not spin the turbine. So therefore, the converter at that point is no long, longer connected to the input shaft of the transmission. I'm pretty sure that's what happened, which really stinks because I don't know what kind of downtime the car is going to have now. With COVID-19 and everything going on, everything's been being put on the back burner. Um, I'm going to get a hold of Precision Industries uh, after I get the converter out and make sure it is actually the converter. If it is a converter, I'll get a hold of Precision Industries and get this thing sent back to them so they could warranty it one more time. Um, hopefully they warranty it again. This is something that is out of my control. Uh, it's just something that happens. Unfortunately, when this does happen, I'm at full load, full power, full boost. Everything is all in at that point when this happens. And it goes from being locked up in gear to absolute neutral just nothing there's not a human being in this world that could get their foot off in time before it actually hits the rev limiter unfortunately it smacked the rev limiter so hard i don't think it damaged anything but i'm gonna have to pull the valve cover off to inspect to make sure i don't have any rocker arms laying everywhere or shattered rocker arms or shattered rollers or needle bearings everywhere or anything like that so this is going to be kind of a time consuming process i'm going to have to get the transmission out of the car figure out what happened there if it broke the input shaft that'll be an easy fix i have a spare uh input shaft until i could get a hold of a billet input shaft which i've been waiting to buy since november unfortunately covid hit everything got put on hold with all these companies that build all these parts so Unfortunately, I just got to continue to deal with what I got. And the input shaft is really the last thing that I need for the car. I Everything else I got. I got 3000 GT rear end, the DSS 300M uh, 3000 GT rear axles. I got the Magnus Motorsports uh, billet transfer case gears and shaft. I got a DSS uh Three and a half inch aluminum dry shaft. That's never been a problem. Crap. Now that I've said that, that's probably going to break. That's just my luck. <laughs> I mean, everything in the transmission is built. I got the billet straight cut four gears in the transmission. I got Jeffrey Bush's uh, billet four drum. Uh, Kigley Racing third gear billet basket in the car with the six friction in it. I've got everything done to the transmission that you could possibly imagine doing to these transmissions, except the input shaft. In a way, I'm hoping it is the input shaft because that'll be an easy fix and I could get back up and running very soon. But so COVID-19 is really putting a damper on everything this year. I'm really sick and tired of it. I'm sure you guys are sick and tired of it, but we just got to keep trucking along. So 
I guess you need to start tearing this down. So, well, got the transmission out. This is a moment of truth. I haven't pulled the converter out of the transmission yet, but we're getting ready to tug this thing out of here. <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's grab a rag here. I know it's gonna dump a bunch of fluid, but I'm hoping it's a input shaft that broke. Let's cross our fingers. Yes, it is the input shaft that broke. Okay. I mean, it sucks, but Oh no. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that out of the converter. Okay, now that kind of sucks. I'm going to have to do some uh some trickery to get that out of the converter. I don't know how I'm going to do that. It's not going to be fun. I might be able to thread maybe a small bolt into the hole that's in the end of this. You know, cuz you see the oil galley here. Uh, maybe I could uh, pop it out, but chances are there's a bunch of shards in the converter, so I'm probably going to have to have this thing cut open and cleaned. So, but it wasn't the converter this time. It was the input shaft. I've officially broken everything in this car. <laughs> that was one thing I haven't broke yet, and it happened. So, uh, what a bummer. What a bummer. But might be able to get this thing back up and going a little bit faster than i expected though so all right well time to fix it all right so i was able to get the broken piece out of the converter um a little tricky uh, i found a drill bit that actually fit in the oil hole that's in this shaft and i tapped it in with a hammer and grabbed the slide hammer and just slide hammered it out luckily the splines and the converter look pretty good there wasn't any chunks in there that i could see um drain the converter out as best as i could spun it around uh took a magnet and went down in there couldn't really get anything most everything was contained right here on top when i tipped it upside down there was little chunks you know that came out of it i kind of went through all the pieces that i found and it looks like i got everything so we're just going to go ahead and send it and put it all back together and get after it. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to do something here. Unfortunately, there's just no bullet input shafts available right now. Um, I'm just going to have to continue to wait on that. I don't know how long it's going to be before we even get an input shaft. So I'm just going to put another stock input shaft in it. This is uh, another spare that I have this one's good splines are not twisted everything looks good on it so we're gonna go ahead and you know roll with that splines feel really good uh, there was no twist in the splines in the converter so we're good on that um, now I got to get the uh, transmission apart and get the uh, input shaft that broke you know get the rest of that out of there and then go through the transmission and make sure everything's good there and there's no debris or any junk in the transmission. So I'm going to get this thing apart and uh, see what we find. All right. Just got the uh, the pump pulled out um, and pulled the input shaft out. Man, it really twisted that thing up. <laughs> that is twisted up pretty good. But so far, everything else is looking good. Um I'm getting ready to pull the clutches out of this uh, beautiful Kigley Racing uh, billet drum for the third gear. This is a six friction. Um, so far, everything's looking pretty good on it. The bushing looks good. A um, couple of shine spots, but that's nothing out of the ordinary. So I'm going to get this thing apart, and we're going to look at the, uh, the frictions and steels on this and see how well... They're holding up. Um, when I was running the OEM basket with the five friction, uh, the Kegley five friction clutch pack, uh, I was burning those things up within just a couple passes. 
um not mainly because there's nothing wrong with the clutch pack it's just i'm making enough power that it just i was asking a lot of the oem basket so this kigley basket is definitely been the way to go it's been the saving grace so get the snap ring out off here and we'll tip it over here and just get these things out of there uh, this high guard stuff is really sticky so everything wants to stick okay that last steel could stay in there that's fine so um so far everything's looking really good oh beautiful not a single burn mark except for the last one that that's typically one that a lot of people see have a little bit of heat into that last one with the very top one which is kind of common but it's not bad it's not bad at all so i'm not going to really be too concerned with that as long as the steels aren't warped which it does not look like they are everything is looking really good like brand new i mean the steels they're not even leaving any marks on the steel so that's a good sign that was a really good sign i'm very happy with that kiggly racing if you're watching this great job this thing is badass i just i can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you give to the dsm community and myself and having the faith in us but man this is this has been a saving grace thank you very much awesome so we're just going to go ahead and stack these back in here um keep in mind there's there's missing teeth on these steels if you see that right there you have to line those up all the way uh, throughout the whole stack you gotta let oil come through these and what it does is it basically allows transmission fluid to pass through and uh, cool the frictions and steels so if you don't have these lined up you're gonna end up burning up the uh the frictions and steels eventually so uh, let's find that missing tooth on this one sometimes it's kind of hard to see there she is all right so we're just gonna stack that just like that and we're gonna go back in exactly how they came out since that's how they're mating everything is just looking fantastic on this this is the best my third gear basket has ever looked so that's i'm super impressed couldn't ask for anything more all right getting plenty of fluid to them they're all nice and soaked see that one got a little bit of heat there but the last two seem to do that um not sure there's much that could be done about that but it's not burning them up so that's good i could live with that at the power levels where we're at how much power the this third gear is holding down track um i don't know what it is with my car but for whatever reason my car just loves the back half. I mean, I've seen as much as 47 mile an hour back half, which is just insane. Yeah, everything's looking good there. All right. Then we got uh, Jeffrey Bush's uh, JB Design billet forward drum, which I actually stopped pulling the frictions and steels out of this thing to inspect because I never actually had a problem with these. I've been running the same frictions and steels for the past three years and I pull them out and the logos on the frictions are actually still there so i'll probably pull that apart later and check that out um look at the band here the band's gotten a little bit of heat to it um 
Not too god awfully bad, yeah, it's kind of peeling up some uh, material. So I, I may actually loosen the band up a little bit. That could be also contributing to the input shaft splines twisting, you know, because when it goes to engage third gear, it has to disengage second gear, and second gear is the band. Uh, basically, this is the kick down drum, and when second gear is engaged, it clamps around this drum. Well, if it doesn't release fast enough, then it's going to lock second and third together, almost like a trance break, which is no bueno. You don't want that. And that might be a little bit of a cause of why I'm twisting these things, um, other than just the sheer power that the car is making. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to loosen up the band a little bit and see if I could prolong these input shafts. If not, then we're just going to continue to run the stock input shafts until we can get a billet one uh, whenever, whenever they become available. So Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the uh, retainer out and get the uh, planetary out and inspect the planetary. That is the next Achilles heel in this car. Unfortunately, there is nothing out there for a planetary set. I know a couple people have been talking about working on doing billet planetaries, but nothing's happened yet. Um, unfortunately, billet planetary is going to be pretty expensive, so who knows how much that's going to cost or if it's ever going to happen. So, But anyway, I'm going to get that thing out. Okay, I got the uh, planetary out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a backup planetary, which I've already put in. Um, the one that came out of it, I know it's probably going to be hard to see on camera here, but we definitely got some blue and purple marks on the teeth here. And there's definitely some material getting pushed. So this one is on the verge of breaking. I could probably get a few more passes out of it, but it's going to eventually strip these things completely off. It's just better off just go ahead and replace it with a spare one that I had. So that way it's kind of preventative maintenance, but I know I'm just going to continue to go through this problem. Uh, all of us high horsepower auto DSM guys, we, we all go through the same problem. And uh, I know some of the other guys, they, uh, they've tried dry sump systems with their transmissions. They put a port in the top of the trans case to try to get more fluid to the planetaries and that cured the heat problem you know there wasn't so much heat into the gears but the gears are still pushing material weak material and there's not a whole lot we could do about it until somebody comes out with some billet planetaries until that day we just have to live with this problem so anyway i am going to get this transmission back together get back out there and Break it again, like I normally do. Let's see what happens. So, thanks for uh, stopping by, and uh, yeah, hit that notification bell, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm sorry if I sound a little somber right now. I just this is getting pretty exhausting, but I'm still pushing on. So, let's uh, let's get those 750s this year.